Guys, I don't know how the average American is making it right now because from the looks of it, things are just going to hell. For example, if you want to rent an apartment, the landlord wants proof of income three times the rent. And out here in northern New Jersey, that means a one bedroom, you got to be making 30 to 50 percent more than the national average. Groceries have gone up like crazy. It's like it seems like it keeps creeping up ever so slightly But after three four months you feel like it's it's a it's a you know You feel the increase because last year I would be shopping for myself alone Twice a week and it would run me about 80 bucks each trip now It's costing me like 125 to 140 per trip and when I include going out maybe once or twice a week to eat my my total for food is coming out to be crazy it's over a grand and i know it wasn't like that growing up you know it's, it's gotten out of hand but people are walking around like nothing's uh nothing's wrong everything is fine everything's dandy but it won't be long before people are gonna have to decide whether to pay the rent pay the mortgage or feed their families and of course, people are going to choose to feed their families. And so, who knows what's going to happen. But I was at the mall the other day and it was pretty packed. But there wasn't really that many people holding bags. It was just people hanging around window shopping, which doesn't mean squat. It just means people want to get out of the houses and hang around, maybe eat at the food court. And, and that the food court was popping, of course. But... We're gonna have to wait and see. I, I foresee a lot of, a lot more shoplifting, a lot of stores going out of business because of that, and there's gonna be a lot of break-ins, a lot of cars being stolen, a lot of, a lot of parts being stolen, wheels, catalytic uh, converters, uh, which is already happening, but it's gonna like, you know, more and more people are gonna wanna do it because they have no other way more and more people are gonna turn to scamming and stealing and all that stuff because things have gotten so expensive. Okay, so this is a, a quick vent. I'm in Ohio. Ohio used to be amongst the most affordable states to live in. So I'm gonna throw some prices out here. The average rent in Ohio used to be five hundred dollars eight hundred dollars um maybe a thousand dollars for like a decent suburban area in cleveland let's say now it's like three hundred thirteen hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars sixteen hundred dollars eighteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars for rent so now that um people are seeing their rent is so expensive now people are looking to buy but now that they go buy the houses are priced two times more than what they used to be however people are still making the same fucking type of money the groceries are still going up the gas is climbing back the fuck up this is ohio we're in the northeast when you go to your employer and ask them for more money, they act like it's coming out of their pocket instead of um, the corporate. The cost of living ain't adding up with what 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 we getting paid out here, man. What the fuck type of way is that to live? It's sickening, man. When you go into a 40 hour, when you go into a job 40 hours a week and you put X, Y hours into this job throughout the years, that's time that you're spending away from your family. You should be able to at least be compensated fairly for that. People working to just pay bills, man. And as far as the rent, it's like Northeast Ohio. We got a beach here. We have the worst weather that you could think of. Um, 
I'm not trying to downplay my city or anything like that. A lot of people might see this depending on where you're from and be like, ooh, that's cheap. That's not the norm for us, though. Like, the way what they're charging for rent now is fucking insane for what it used to be. If you go to a suburban area or far out, it's racist. People treat you like shit. It's just the cost of living is not adding up what people are getting paid. Shalom. I would like to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim, pushing this word across the four corners of the world. Just another news update through the spirit, the power, and the vibration of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I have an article from activistpost.com, and the title says, The middle class is increasingly becoming the impoverished class and the poor are increasingly being pushed into the streets. And this article was published on September the 13th, 2023. And it says America's middle class is being systematically eviscerated. When the Federal Reserve pumped trillions of dollars into the financial system during the pandemic, most Americans did not realize what that would do to them. That money certainly made the wealthy a whole lot wealthier but it also dramatically increased the cost of living for the rest of us. So now inflation has been rising much faster than paychecks have. And the cost of living has become exceedingly oppressive. In fact, last year we witnessed the largest decline in real medium household income in more than a decade. And as you saw from those two previous videos, where you have more and more of these so-called middle class Americans releasing their frustration due to inflation price gouging, which at one point in time where the middle class was a symbol of the American dream. So now in this day of time, we are witnessing more of the middle class are being taxed into poverty by local, state, and federal taxes. And all of this that's going on right now in current news or current events, it all links up with biblical prophecies by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that they gave that divine intervention unto their service to prophets. So therefore, these are nothing but the signs of our times. And that takes me right to Matthew 16 and 1. The Pharisees also with the Pharisees came and tempted and desired him, referring to Yahweh Shai, that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky because you might have different jakes, especially these different old school jakes. A certain part of their body might be hurting or something like that, and they can be able to relate it to either it's going to snow, rain, you know, the list goes on. So Yahweh Shah stated, Oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Which goes into those spiritual tokens that Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh only gave that intelligent foresight unto his service to prophets. And Lord willing, we are those men, and the things that we are prophesying according to the scriptures about the foreseeable future of America, Babylon the Great. And as you can see through the spirit, it's definitely circling the dream. And now these draconian measures are targeting the so-called middle class. And the middle class is really like the stability of America. And speaking as a man, I definitely believe that this next so-called pandemic lockdown will definitely phase the middle class out. And this is what this article is pretty much going into. Where you have the middle class are starting to shrink and pretty soon the middle class will disappear. Which leads up with a heavy biblical prophecy within our lifetimes. So back to the article and it says, the official tally is in and it is brutal. Americans suffered the biggest drop in household income in 2022 in a dozen years. Real median household income was $74,580 in 2022, a drop of 2.3% from the prior year, the Census Bureau said Tuesday. This is the biggest drop in household income since 2010, where it household income fell 2.6%. That means it is worse than the pandemic decline of 2.2%, it is the fourth worst year in records going back to 1985. In 2010, the U.S. economy was just coming out of the horrible recession that we had just experienced in 2008 and 2009. Those were not fun times. 
and the times that we are moving into will not be fun either. And that links up with the prophecy within Isaiah 24 and 11, how all joy is darkened and how the mirth of the land is gone. And that mirth goes into the amusement, the laughter, the happiness. So now we in those times concerning biblical prophecies is being transitioned into some bleak, dark, dismal times. And it says right here, we are being told that high inflation is the primary reason why real median household income is falling. The declines were driven by high inflation. The measure of inflation that is used to calculate real income rose 7.8%, the worst inflation since 1981. 1981 was a long time ago. But at that time, the U.S. economy quickly recovered under the leadership of President Ronald Reagan. We will not be so fortunate this time around. Our leaders flooded the system with giant mountains of money and almost everyone cheered as they were doing it. But now we are paying the price. Recently, a Gen X mom named Jessica McCabe made headlines all over the world when she posted a video on TikTok in which she expressed how frustrating it is to watch her adult children deeply struggle in this economy. And I was able to find a video through the spirit. So check this out. I am so tired of feeling helpless as a parent. Yes, my kids are grown adults. My oldest is 28, my youngest is 25. And I thought by teaching them what I learned, which is you work hard, you get a good job, you're gonna get the things in life that you need, right? Worked for me, why wouldn't it work for them? Cause it doesn't, because the world can changed, all right? And now I feel like I see them struggling. And before my generation comes at me, yes, I understand struggling is a part of life. We all struggled, but there's a difference between struggling and drowning, all right? So we struggled and it was tough, but you know what? We made it. We knew there was a light at the end of the tunnel with our struggle. It seems like kids today, no matter how much they struggle, they just get further and further down the water into the drowning point, all right? When I was their age, I was making less than $10 an hour and I can afford to live on my own. Now you have to be making six figure salary to get a decent tiny little place to live. So what the fuck is going on and how do we help them as parents? I told my son, all you have to do is work hard, go to college or join the military like I did. Um, he went to college, got his degree, got a full-time job. He moved back in with me right when he graduated from college because he said, hey mom, as soon as I get a job, which was within two weeks of him getting out of college, um, Maybe take me two months and I'll save up enough money for me to move out. Okay, cool. It's been 10 months. He has saved almost every dime and still can't afford to live. Why are one bedroom studio apartments almost $2,000 a month? Why? Like, I, I just don't get it. So I don't even think that there's even classes anymore. There used to be, uh, you know, upper class, middle class, lower class. It's literally turning into the ultra wealthy and then everybody else is just poor. Like, that's what it's happening. And then I told him, hey, when you turn 25, at least your car insurance will go down. Hell no, he turned 25 and his car insurance went up $150. I tell him, you know, if you need health insurance, get a good job. He did, has health insurance. He has had a medical emergency this week. Had to go to an emergency room twice. A, he had to go to the emergency room because he couldn't get anybody to see him with the health insurance that he had, right? So he had to go to an emergency room. Now he's out money for that too. It seems like you can never get ahead. And then my daughter, I told her all you have to do because she wanted to buy her own house. My daughter worked six days a week, 12 hours a day to save up enough for this down payment. Finally got this house. She's paying double what I'm paying for my mortgage, but her loan was the same amount. And then her mortgage company, after she's already moved in, said, oh, by the way, we forgot to tell you that you need this type of coverage, which we forgot in the beginning. That's an extra $200 you have been paying a month. And all they see when they come home is they watch social media, kids their age on lavish vacations with all this money and nothing to do, all these social media influencers, because we value those types of things over hard workers. We will pay them $10,000, but you'll work 40 hours a week. You can't afford it. And this is Isaiah 14 verse four, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. And that's referring to the nobility of Esau Edom and say, how have the oppressor ceased? The Golden City cease. And that Golden City is referencing to America. And how you know through the spirit, this is a key indicator to America. Remember, the Golden Age or era of America, which was that post-war era of the 1940s and the 1950s, especially the 1950s, where they considered that era as the Golden Age of American history. 
And that's when America was the world's unquestionable economic, political, and military power. So right here through the spirit, it's prophesying about how that golden city is going to cease. And we are definitely within those times prophetically, where you have these American Edomites who have the blessing. Fast forward to now where you have these American Edomites are complaining, frustrated about their financial struggles. And where you have more and more middle class Americans are not able to save due to keeping up with monthly expenses. And also nearly half of American workers do not earn enough to afford a one bedroom apartment. So again, back in Isaiah 14 and 4, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how half the oppressor cease, the golden city cease. So America is circling the drain, and while this sinful kingdom is circling the drain, it's also bleeding out, slowly but steadily. And it's more so a self-inflicted wound via the naphtha. And that's because I saw a lot of comments regarding videos like this, which you saw in the beginning, and a lot of people on the coming board were blaming NAFTA for this middle class crisis. And NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement, which was an agreement between Canada, the US, and Mexico that was signed in 1992, but it actually took an effect within 1994. So therefore this trade agreement was supposed to boost trade, eliminate barriers, and reduce tariffs. But it really was a self-inflicted wound that was engineered by the higher ups of the society and it crippled the American industry by local farmers being out of business and it contributed to rising income inequality. You had trade deficits, then lower wages. Then that transitioned into more factory closures, job losses, because these different manufacturing factories were outsourcing to these other countries for a lower buck. So you have a lot of these Americans felt that this NAFTA agreement, it gutted American towns and it also robbed Americans by their dignity by buying American made or owned and also by supplying for themselves and their families. And I saw one particular comment regarding this. They stated just a few decades ago where you had one single parent household factory worker could be able to supply for the whole household along with buying a new house and a new car. However, that's not the case in this day and time because it's systematically designed by the higher ups for the middle class to be pushed off the cliff. And just reading through these different comments on videos like this, you have a lot of these different Americans being awakened to who are really causing these economic and financial struggles within America. And we know through the spirit that's referring to the nobility of Esau Edom, but these Americans on the coming boards, they call them as the ultra rich. And where we are coming within those times, pursuant to 2 Ezra, the 15th chapter and the 16th verse, how there should be sedition among men and evading one another, and how they should not regard their kings nor princes. So these different lower class people, like the middle class and the lower class, they're not going to be able to get their hands on the higher ups of Esau Edom. However, they will have the capability of getting the extinction of Esau Edom going into these lesser luminaries like these different senators, governors, mayors, these different local councilmen who are really in cahoots with the higher ups and pushing forth this NWO. So the more that this inflation is rising, the more hopelessness, the depression, the anxiety is going to rise within these Americans as well. And that's going to produce more what? More crime levels, scams, which is why General Salente stated you're going to see crime levels in America that are going to rival that of a third world country. And he was going into how you're going to start seeing people being kidnapped within this country and how it's going to get very violent within America. And that takes me right to Habakkuk 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And that's what we're doing as the sincere prophets of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot within these latter days through the gift of the Holy Spirit by being those watchmen to the house of Israel, sounding their alarm. And cautioning our people that impending danger is coming to America, known as Babylon the Great. And it says, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision 
and make it plain upon tables that he may run and read in it. And that vision goes into that faculty of sight, that divine foresight veiled that spiritual eyesalve. And all of the prophets of old were given that divine foresight to see the downfall of America. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Hence this article, how the middle class is increasingly becoming the impoverished class and how the poor are increasingly being pushed into the streets. So therefore the prophecies of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh are definitely speaking within these end times. And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul, referring to Esau Edom, the man of sin, the son of perdition, which is lifted up, is not a right in him. And as it says in Ecclesiastes, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. But the just should live by his faith, referring to the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. Verse 5, yea, also because he transgressed by wine. And when you transgress, that means that you go beyond the boundary or the limit of. And that's definitely what Esau Edom does concerning the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. They infringe or violate anything that has a righteous standard to it. And I was just thinking through the spirit, that's why it's heavy upon Esau to push out this trans vibration. Like transhumanism, transgender, transgressions, which are nothing but abominations. And it says, he is a proud man, neither keep it at home. And America is known as the worldwide police who want to enforce and regulate laws in these other countries, but not taking care of their home. And where you have millions of these Americans are struggling now, who enlarge his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather it unto him all nations and heap it unto him all people. And that's referring to this NWO where this is intentionally engineered by the higher ups to target the middle class, which is going to fulfill a major biblical prophecy. Verse six, should not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe to him that increase it, that which is not his, how long and to him that laid it himself with thick clay. And that thick clay represents the depth within America. What do they say? Credit is king. So that created a credit-based system. And look how much these Americans has accumulated within debt over the years. And as of today, September the 19th, 2023, the U.S. national debt just reached $33 trillion for the first time. And the U.S. Treasury Department already projected this U.S. national debt to surpass $50 trillion by 2030. And Aparatazot by that time frame will already be out of here. So again, woe to him that increase it, that which is not his, how long, and to him that laid it himself with thick clay. So jumping back to this article, it says, Americans are keeping their vehicles longer than ever. And that is because most of us simply cannot afford to replace them. As I have discussed previously, Americans are increasingly turning to debt to help make ends meet from month to month. Credit card debt surged dramatically during the second quarter. And this is starting to become an enormous problem. And as you can see right here, American households now have an average of $10,170 credit card debt. As record numbers say, they are worried about being cut off from access to loans. Data from the New York Federal Reserve shows nationwide credit card debt swelled by $43 billion in the second quarter of the year, the second largest increase on record. Of course, there is a limit to how much more debt the U.S. consumers can take on, and financial institutions are starting to say no a lot more often. I warned my readers that the flow of credit will start to get tighter and tighter, and now it is happening. Right now, so many formerly middle-class Americans have been pushed into what I call the impoverished class, and many that were formerly poor now find themselves pushed out into the streets. In fact, according to the Wall Street Journal, we have witnessed the largest increase in homelessness ever recorded this year. So please don't believe anyone that tries to convince you that the economy is doing just fine. It most certainly is not. Homeless encampments are popping up like mushrooms all over the nation, and many communities are not pleased about this at all. Jump down right here and it says, As the economy continues to crumble, things are going to get even worse. 
And as things get worse, the middle class will continue to shriek. It is almost as if we are all playing a really bizarre game of musical chairs. With each passing day, even more spots in the middle class are being removed from the game and the ranks of the impoverished class continue to grow larger and larger. And that's definitely beautiful for these proudful Americans. As it says in Proverbs 16 and 18, pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before it fall. America embodies pride, which is a characteristic that Yahweh why Yahweh Shah hates. And that's why this place America is on the brink of collapse. But like I stated earlier within this video, this middle class crisis is all leading into a major prophecy. And let's get right quick. Isaiah 46 and 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times that things are not yet done, saying, my counsel should stand and I will do all my pleasure. So a part of the Lord's counsel is fulfilling his word via biblical prophecies. And one of those main prophecies, how the middle class is increasingly becoming the impoverished class, it links with Revelation 13 and 16. And it says, and he calls it all, and that he is referring to the nobility of Esau Edom, the ones who are authorized by Yahweh Yahweh Shai to implement this digital currency system, or this great reset, or this NWO. So again, it says, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor. And notice it doesn't say anything about the middle, referring to the middle class. And that's because the middle class are gradually being phased out right now. And again, I believe through the spirit that the American middle class will totally be wiped out during the second pandemic lockdown. Free and bun to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And the only component or device that fulfills this prophecy within this day of time can only be the microchip. So that concludes the lesson through the spirit. The middle class is increasingly becoming the impoverished class and the poor are increasingly being pushed into the streets. So Abaratazat, you all is edified, you all stay strong, keep pushing forward. Shalom.